What's up guys? Welcome back to another video here on Muddy Beards 4x4. Today, we are going to be building a new front bumper for my Jeep. Been needing one for more than two years. Finally getting a chance to get it built. So let's get started. As I go along in the video, I'll show you what parts that I'm using, where to get them, and how much they'll cost to do it. I'm in this bumper about $100, $110 for me, but that's because I had the main part of this bumper was on the Jeep when I bought it, and uh, it didn't cost me anything. I'm just using what I already have along with a couple of new pieces uh, that I purchased in order to complete this whole bumper and make it one piece. This is gonna be the foundation. It's gonna be super easy to build off of this because it's so basic. It has the mounting holes on the top and the bottom already and the D-links, which I really like. I had a Smitty built uh, winch mount plate on this and this is the reason why I am uh, doing this project right now because my winch has bent the crap out of this winch plate. This winch plate is so bent that I can no longer use it without causing damage to the winch itself. Uh, I'm gonna be doing a long-term review of that winch. Uh, it's gonna be in another video. If it's out already, make sure you check it out or it will be coming out very soon. I'm not sure which video will be released first. What I'm going to replace that with is the Barnes four-wheel drive dual pool winch plate, which is pretty cool. So they make this plate in two different sizes, I believe 33 inches and one's a little bit narrower. Uh, these are kind of a universal fit. The 33 inch one, this particular one, is the exact width of the TJ frame. So I can line this up, drill my three holes here on each side. I'm gonna build a plate to extend out this bottom bumper to weld onto the bottom of this to make it nice and flat. This bumper originally had this piece that went all the way out to here but with these big 40 inch tires, it just rubbed on them. And at King of the Hammers two years ago, I just had to just slice them off on the trail. So I think I'm just gonna cut this little nub off to give me a nice little cover, a little bit protection for my anti-rock here and to bring that in. So just cut that off, weld that cap back on here, weld in this plate here, drill some holes. So it'll eventually be bolted through this plate, through the bumper into the frame and the same thing on the back side. Through this, through the plate, I'm gonna build onto here, and then it'll be fully welded together. It's gonna to be super strong. Let's do it. With one of the plates made with the holes drilled, line up perfectly. I'm just gonna set it on top of the other one to line it up so I don't have to measure and do that all again. And then drill out this other one to match. Over the years, this bumper has seen a lot of abuse and I noticed that the top of this is no longer totally flat, causing that winch plate to kind of wobble up on top here. So I put it up in my press. I'm gonna try and just kind of flatten out this top piece a little bit. So I have the bumper back from getting it all cleaned up outside. I'm gonna hit it with some acetone. Anytime you're gonna deal with metal, even new metal, you wanna hit it with acetone before you weld on it. It's gonna pull out all the oil and contaminants on the surface so that's gonna be a lot easier to weld, make much better welds when you clean it up. So next up I got my plates mounted up where I want them. I'm actually gonna bolt this top bumper down and these plates down, tack weld the sides of it, set the plate down on top of it, tack the plate to the top of this and then I can drill all my holes from the backside and then being all in the perfect location. Less plan anyway, so. Okay. 
Now this is specific to mine only. I have these bolts that are holding my skid plate for my steering gearbox is bolted to the front here. So once I get everything done, I'm no longer going to be able to get to the back side of this very easily. So I'm just going to weld these nuts on the back side uh, before I start assembling everything. With the bumper off, took the opportunity to clean this up. Uh, this had to flatten it out a little bit, and I used my tap, and I just cleaned all the threads out of all of these, all three of these, and the one on the bottom. And then the same on this side, had to flatten out the frame a little bit because it was bulging out. Uh, tapped all the threads, and also this guy right here in the middle was broken off. The nut had fallen off. I don't know where it was. I cannot find it. Uh, so basically I put a new nut on the inside and I welded it to the frame here. So I have a new capture nut inside the frame. So that was a pain to get that done. Now I have all six bolts on top, two bolts on the bottom, all ready to go. So let's uh, put the bumper on and test fit it. So the test fitting looks pretty darn good. I'm happy with the way everything turned out. I did have to uh, kind of oblong these two lower holes a little bit to get the bolts to line up, but I got these two are perfect, these two are perfect, and then these two lower ones a little bit. Had to kind of oval them out with my uh, carbide bit on my little whizzy wheel here. Doesn't take very long to do it. And even like the old winch plate mount, all of the mounting holes are actually way oval. Uh, so I don't feel too bad about only two of uh, eight of them being a little bit ovaled out, which is gonna be fine. So I am going to kind of put a plate in here and just something like that, weld in a plate so it's just not a square that looks kind of weird. So I'm going to make some plates for each side kind of like this and tack weld it in and then I'm going to bolt the whole bumper down to the frame fully bolted in tightened everything and then I'm going to put some really big beads on here probably not weld the whole thing but really big beads on these main portions of it so when I take it off and fully weld the inside and some of these other parts it's not going to move around on me at all, and then my bolt holes won't line up. So let's cut out some brackets. Well guys, I gotta say, I kinda made a little bit of a mistake here on this little bull bar uh, winch protector thing. I just used inch and three quarter 120 wall DOM, my Harbor Freight 
Uh, two bender does not like it, uh, even though I bent it from four different separate locations on the bar. On each bend, it still flattened it out pretty good and kinked it way more than I had anticipated. So in retrospect, if I was to do this again, uh, one, I could go to one of my friend's house who actually has a real bender and have them bend it for me. The other choice, if you don't have friends with a bender or you don't have a bender, you don't want to mess with it, Barnes Four Wheel Drive actually has DIY bull bars, two different types. One's 40 bucks, one's 35 bucks. It's pre-bent, pre-made, ready to just weld onto your project. It would have been perfect for this uh, if I had known that they had it when I started building this. I actually purchased all these parts to build this bumper a year and a half ago, and uh, it's just been sitting in the garage, and I figured I had all of it here already, so I was just gonna use what I had to do it. Also, make sure you snag that discount code at Barnes Four Wheel Drive, Muddy Beards, get you 10% off your purchase. Now let's finish up this bumper. Got my hoop all welded on front and all the way on the bottom here. So I'm gonna make these little gussets that are gonna go about right here. Reinforce this in case I run into some trees and whatnot. So I got them marked out here on some 3 16 Now if you guys are wondering what welder and plasma cutter I'm using, I use the Harbor Freight Titanium Unlimited 200 multi-process welder and the ESOB Thermodynamics uh, Cutmaster 40 Plasma Cutter. And I have to say that I do love both of these machines. They've never let me down. They work flawlessly every time I turn them on. Well, there you go guys, all finished up with this custom front bumper that I built. I'm overall pretty happy with it. I have no complaints. It is a huge upgrade over what I had on here before, which was basically nothing. And it looked really ratty and really rusty. So this is just an idea of something that you guys can do on your own in the garage. So this dual pull winch plate from Barnes Four Wheel Drive, $74. So the bull bar, if you were to purchase this, which is gonna be the best way to go in my opinion, that's 45 bucks. And even these gussets that I made here on the side, if you guys don't want to make something like that, you can just buy them there too. They're like $4 a piece. So all total with that 10% discount, Muddy Beards being the coupon code. And if you're lazy, you just wanna click the link in the description for Barnes Four Wheel Drive, it'll automatically give you that 10% off. You can be in this thing 110 bucks, free shipping. And then if you have a, a base bumper, an old bumper, or get something on Craigslist or whatever, or use some scrap metal you got laying around, or just build the whole bottom section yourself, whatever you guys wanna do. Anyways, if you guys enjoy what we're doing here on Muddy Beards 4x4, make sure you hit that subscribe button, leave a like, comment, Make sure you hit up our website for more discount codes and coupons. Check out our Amazon store. You can shop in there. We got an Amazon link on our website as well. You can do your shopping, which will support us in a way where it costs you nothing. Break on that beat, going crazy.